Coming up on the sports desk, we're going to tell you who grabbed CIF postseason accolades. Plus, you're going to meet a special Olympian competing in the USA Games in Seattle and a Little League softball player competing for Team USA in Oklahoma. We have all this and so much more. The sports desk begins right now. Welcome everyone to the only sports show designed with the Torrance sports fan in mind. Your dreams are filled. You're rocking with the desk. Award season continues in the CIF. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, don't forget to show us some love on social media. Keep us in the loop on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Share your videos and photos. And remember to give us some ideas for future stories. If you know someone who should be featured on our show, please let us know because we love showcasing what's good about our local residents. All right, our friends at the CIF were making a list recently, and of course, checking it twice. And once again, some of our local athletes made the cut. Here's the deal. The all CIF Southern Section teams were announced, and we're gonna start with high school softball. Guess who won the Player of the Year Award in Division Three? You got it. Newman! West High softball ace Maylee Newman was named Player of the Year. She was dominant on the mound and at the plate last season, and she capped off her senior year at West with a CIF Southern Section Championship. And check this out, Newman's coach Jason Belcher was named Coach of the Year. How cool is that? Belcher guided the champs to a 30-3 overall record, 7-1 in the Pioneer League, and finished the season ranked 7th in the state and 35th in the country. And it doesn't end there. West senior catcher Becca Chung was selected to the all CIF D3 team. And let's check out division four now, where Torrance High School senior outfielder Jen Liu made the cut. And in division two, two local players were selected. North High senior pitcher Kendra Marzarini and South High freshman sensation infielder Reagan Walsh. And lastly, in high school baseball, South High senior pitcher Kevin Ishimaru was selected to the All-CIF team in Division IV. Congrats to all of our local athletes. Well deserved. Hey, Julieta Rolla was traveling recently, and it was okay, because she was actually in okay, as in Oklahoma. As you recall, Julieta was selected to play softball for Team USA this summer. How cool is that? I'd say very. She is the only one in the USA 12U All-Star Tournament representing Torrance. And before leaving for Oklahoma City, Julietta spent some time with our very own Danny Miskell. Out of the thousands of girls who play softball in the country, only 360 were selected to play for the All-American Games. And North Torrance's Julietta Roa was one of those girls to make the cut. She jokes about how she was caught off guard when she heard the big news. I was doing my homework and my mom was like called over my dad and they were quiet for a little bit so I thought oh no I'm in trouble and so they called me over and she told me I made the team. I was in shock and I didn't believe her and then when I read the email I was jumping up and down. I was so happy. Both Julieta's teammates and her own coach weren't surprised at all. They all vouch for her and say she has the qualities of a star player always giving 100% of her efforts in the game and even in practice. She brings up the team and she does it in practice and the heart of Julieta is the heart of a champion. Her determination to always get better and always be the best player on the field, her desire to always achieve the best and also make sure that she makes everybody else around her the best. And Coach Bubb is going on seven years with coaching Julieta and seeing her grow with the sport. He speaks for everyone in the league and says they couldn't be more proud and excited for her. It's just such an honor and it's such a um, privilege to actually be able to coach somebody that talented and know that she's, she's getting what she deserves. So we're over here on second base and this is Julieta's stomping grounds. This is where she protects the turf. And Julieta, why don't you go ahead and tell us how it is you became the second base player for the team. 
so my when I started, I my mom was my first coach, so she played second base, so she decided to put me at second base, and I really liked it. Then we, I had to move to shortstop because there was another girl that needed to play second base, and I've loved the middle infield ever since. Julieta says she's excited to bring her base running and fielding skills to the national games in hopes that her team can win the championship. And there's more she's looking forward to. Meeting all these girls from different states just to know how they play in different states. But I'm excited because then I'll be able to have girls that will understand more of the game so I can communicate better. Julieta is going to learn a lot from playing with the girls all over the U.S. Getting to play with friends is actually one of the many reasons why she loves the game of softball. It's a family sport and I can do it anytime with my friends, like randomly on a field or even in the backyard, we can just set up bases and that's amazing. If you make a mistake on the field, you just have to shake it off because then things you know will get better as you go on. You can't stay with it, you have to move on. She's got the right attitude and she's gonna need it because Julieta is moving on to three intense days of playing in the tourney. She knows she's gonna be able to hold her own because she's had the best band of sisters to prepare her for this once in a lifetime opportunity. It's okay if they like push me too hard, then like we're cool because I, I know they're behind me. They've helped me and they've had my back all these seven years and they've pushed me. So it's amazing to have them behind my back. Julieta says that her long-term goals include playing for the UCLA Bruins and then going pro. As she works her way up, Here's what she's hoping to get out of this experience. It means like the world because I get to show what I've been doing for the past seven years. And I just really hope I can have my friends behind me and they can do it with me next year. Second base was my mom's position. So we tried that out when I first started and I loved it. Then I moved to shortstop just to help the team more. And the middle infield has been my home since and it's around second base. So second base is my home. Julia, the catcher, whenever she throws down, I'm here all the time to back up or to lay down the tag. And we've gotten so many girls out th for them trying to steal. Reporting from the North Torrance softball field, I'm Danny Miskell with the Sports Desk. Danny, thanks. And check this out. Julietta played four games total in the tournament. And she played every inning of the last three games. She finished with seven stolen bases, a 714 on base percentage, and she batted 500, not too shabby. The 2018 Special Olympics U.S. Games are underway in Seattle, Washington, which means it's time for all of us to celebrate these amazingly gifted and courageous athletes. And someone who is usually swimming over at the plunge right now is actually in Seattle competing at the games and representing his hometown of Torrance. That's awesome. Danny Miskell has his story. Meet Johnny Pierce. He's 24 years old, a Paralympic gold medalist and the athlete who's going to be representing Torrance and the state of California at the USA Games. I'm ready for the Seattle. I get to compete in the Olympics. All very exciting. <laughs> This is actually his uh, first time going to the USA Games. Johnny's competing this week in the 200 IM, 200 freestyle, and 100 freestyle events. Now, here's the thing about Johnny. He's a lightning fast swimmer. He swims the 100 freestyle in 52 seconds. The average best time is well over a minute. So he's gonna blow everyone's mind away in Seattle. We're excited because we want other people to see how good he is. Uh, when we go to Paralympic meets, there's not a lot of uh, athletes, male or female, that have an intellectual disability competing at that high level. Johnny Pierce won three gold medals in 2016, and that qualified him to go to the USA Games. Now, the way that it works in the Special Olympics, they just do a random selection process because they want to keep it fair for anyone to be able to go. All you have to have is the gold medal. So it was a complete luck of the draw that Johnny got his name drawn, and that's why he's headed to Seattle to compete in the USA Games. So once in a lifetime, and once you get picked, you most likely will never get picked again. We've got 25,000 kids in Southern California with, that are in Special Olympics. So they've only drawn that's 75 that. kids that are going to Seattle from Southern California. <laughs> that tells you how lucky it is to get picked. I think a new friend's competing as a dance. I see the big fireworks show. Fourth of July is awesome. Oh, they're going to be so much fun. 
More to come on Johnny Pierce and the 2018 Special Olympics on our next episode. Danny, thanks, and don't forget to watch Danny's full report on Special Olympian Johnny Pierce and his amazing journey on our next episode. You won't want to miss that. Okay, in case you've been living under a rock or recently captured by space aliens, the FIFA World Cup is going on right now, and oh yeah, this thing is pretty popular. Every four years, the mother of all soccer tournaments captivates the entire planet. As is the case right now, the World Cup, as you know, is taking place in Russia this year, and we sent our very own Danny Miskell over to the Toyota Sports Complex to find out which teams you think are going to win the World Cup. And here's what you told Danny. With the 2018 World Cup well underway, we're out here at the Toyota Sports Complex with the Beach FC South Bay. We've been asking these guys which countries they're rooting for, which players are they pulling for and modeling their skills and techniques after, and we've gotten a comprehensive poll to see who they think is going to win this year's World Cup. I think that Argentina will win. I want Messi to get his win. France and Portugal. Why France and why Portugal? They have my favorite players, Griezmann and Ronaldo. So why are you rooting for Japan? Uh, I'm 50% Japanese, so yeah. What did you think of Japan's game today? Oh, it was really good. I mean, I woke up early just to watch it too, so yeah. And then I was surprised they won though, to tell you the truth, because Colombia has a really good team and they got a red card in like the first three minutes, so that was lucky. Uh, I really think France is definitely going to win it this year just because they have a lot of talent on that team and can really move the ball around and distribute it around the field perfectly, and I just think they have the, the star qualities of winning the World Cup. What did you think of uh, the Spain versus Portugal game? I thought it was the best game so far in Port I mean, the World Cup, obviously. I mean, better than all of the other games. What did you think of that hat trick that Ronaldo pulled off? I was obviously mad, but I got to give credit to Ronaldo, or credit to do, honestly. It was, in and it was insane. And do you have any final predictions you want to tell us about who might win the World Cup? I think Brazil. I think Brazil's going to win. Although I want Spain to win, but Brazil's probably going to win. Go España. <laughs> Thank you. Can Spain. you say in Spanish? Um, vamos a España. Los somos el mejores. All right, so we've heard France and Brazil, but here's one country that a kid said is a dark horse that you probably didn't expect. Well, I think Belgium are the favorites. Um, however, I think Croatia is the dark horse. Ooh, can you expand on that for us a little bit? Why would you say that Croatia is a dark horse? Uh, well, Croatia has the best midfield, in my opinion, in the whole tournament. So I believe that they can hold the ball the longest and have the most uh, attacking opportunities. I think they have great forwards in Lukaku and good wingers in uh, Mertens and uh, Hazard, but and they also have a great defense with Vermeilen. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think they're beatable. Check this out. Dylan said that Croatia is the dark horse in the World Cup. What do you think about that? I, I think that's a I think that's a solid statement. They got they got some players. They got Modric and Mandzukic. I think they could they could definitely be the dark horse. And now let's see which countries the girls teams are rooting for. Uh, I want Spain to win. Tell us why you want Spain to win. I think they have the best style of play. I like how they transition from defending to attacking, and their defending is really well. Why are you rooting for Mexico? Because, I mean, I love going there, and then my parents are from there. So are there any players on the team that you, you know, aspire to be like, or maybe even model your techniques after? Maybe Giovanni Dos Santos mm -hmm. or um, Oribe Peralta. They're like very jukes and like how they like just do all their thing. I don't know. It's very inspiring. Arriba Mexico! <laughs> Anything else you want to tell us? That I hope all the teams do well. Mm -hmm. That no matter what happens, they just had fun. They liked it. They enjoyed it. Danny got some good answers there. By the way, those kids all compete for Beach FC South Bay. Can't wait to see who wins the World Cup. Should be interesting. Well, I'm sure you've heard about this already. It's kind of a big deal. And I just want to say this. LeBron James, I interviewed you a bunch of times during your first two seasons in the NBA, and you probably don't remember me, and that's fine. But my message to you is quite simple. Welcome to L.A., my friend. Now let's have some championship parades real soon. What do you say? Sounds good to me. And don't forget to show some love to Torrance. Come on, man. Go Lakers. All right, and speaking of basketball, a bunch of guys who try to ball like LeBron James get together twice a week over at the D. Hardison Center. 
They play in the Adult Open Basketball League, and you should too. It's a lot of fun and great exercise. Cedric Welton explains. If you're looking to hoop it up this summer, look no further than the courts at the D. Hardison Sports Center. One of the many treasures of the Torrance community, the center offers a home for b-ball fanatics to make new friends, compete, and drop some buckets. It's a really nice area to play basketball, let alone to build friendships with young people in the crowd and teach them the basics and the fundamentals of basketball. You don't have to be a former CIF All-Star or a state champion to play here. Players see the league as a break from the norm, a way to stay in shape, and a way to play the game they love. I guess more of a, like a physical activity in my in my sense now. I don't I can't I don't go out there and lift weights. You know what I'm saying? I just go out and here shoot a couple hoops and just chill for a minute and then go back to work. Actually, you know, so that's how it is. The sports center is open daily and offers this basketball league throughout the season. And if you just want to play a few games of pickup, open court is offered Friday and Saturday evenings. All ages and skill levels are welcome with open arms. You know, I think uh, everyone's welcome here, right? We don't discriminate anybody. If uh, individuals want to come here and shoot around or, you know, just to learn the basics, they're more than welcome to come here. And this is a public community. Everyone here is very, very, like, kind and nice to others. So I don't think anyone should have a problem when they do come over here. I think I might be joining these guys real soon. Reporting from the courts at the D. Hardison Sports Center, I'm Cedric Welton for the Sports Desk. Cedric, thanks. If you'd like to learn more about the adult open gym basketball, you can stop by the D. Hardison Center on Jefferson Street or give them a call at 310-972-7760. You can always visit them online. Just go to torrentca.gov and click on the adult sports link. All right, the city's popular Aquacade show is coming up in August, which means right now it's sink or swim time, as in sink synchronized swim time. Don't worry, I'll explain. The plunge is where it all goes down, of course. That's where girls from ages 7 to 17 are learning all about the sport of synchronized swimming. It's basically described as the art of ballet in the water. These girls here are perfecting figures and routines, and they actually go to meets throughout the entire calendar year and compete. Check out this routine here. The girls are having a blast. And that's because of coaches like Katherine Cardew. She's been swimming for six years now. This is her first full year of coaching at the plunge. And she explains why synchro is not your average team sport. For me personally, I wanted to do it because I like team sports. And that's definitely what this is. It's a team sport. It's actually a very hard sport which a lot of people don't really realize because you compare it to water polo and you see them with their egg beatering and all their arm movements, but here everything's mostly underwater. You see the elegance of the legs and the arms, but you don't see what's going on underwater. And there's a lot going on underwater, and more importantly, there's a lot of work that goes into this. These routines are judged on a bunch of things, including how the routine works with the music and how it's executed. Was it sharp or sloppy? And according to Catherine, if you think this sport is easy, you might want to think again. The athletes are very strong and it looks easy, but then when they get in the water, they see it's not easy, but then most of the girls want to grow. So they don't, they don't want an easy sport. They see it for the appeal of the pretty suits and the deck work, but they get in the water and they just want to, they want to see what they can do. And that's what we help them to do. We help them to grow. Tristan Taylor is a freshman at West High School and she's been synchro swimming for a total of seven years now. She started swimming at age three actually and fell in love with it. This program however means more to Tristan than just swimming. It's like a second family. I just love the team so much and how like caring they are and how like how much of a sisterhood it is. The coaches like really help you and like your outsider swim life and your swim life. So it's just an amazing like life experience because it's just so like loving and caring about like the people who are here. The question that a lot of people ask is how do you communicate with your teammates when underwater? Let's face it, it's impossible to actually communicate properly when you're actually holding your breath underwater. So there has to be a secret to this, right? You really need a strong connection with your team. So like it, you like 
sometimes if you need to like you need to like take extra time out of swim to hang out because you need that connection and that bond to make sure that you are in sync and that you like are on the same wave wavelength and that you know what you're doing if you'd like to learn more about the synchronized swim class, just stop by the plunge on Torrance Boulevard or give them a call at 310-781-7113. You can also go to torrentca.gov and click on the swim link. The South Bay Bocce Club is getting popular and for all the right reasons. If you haven't stopped by Columbia Park yet to check it out in person, this would be a good time to do so. Bocce ball is often described by many as a good time with good people on Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 in the morning and again at 6 in the evening. Members of the South Bay Bocce Club and everyone else in Torrance for that matter gather at Columbia Park for a total of two hours to play the game. It doesn't matter if you've never played before because instructors like Bob Chiota and friend Joel Massa, the club's president and vice president, will teach you how to play in case you're unfamiliar. It's a simple game. One little ball is thrown out and then teams of four on each side throw balls to try and get closer to the ball that was originally thrown and the closest one gets a point. It's an easy game to play, which explains why it's getting so popular. Today we have 24 people that showed up to play and that fills up all three courts at one time. So we're just here to help, help them out and learn to play better. And if there's not as many, we get in there and play with them. Bill Grazia Day moved to Torrance two years ago from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and the first thing he saw was the listing in the Torrance Seasons booklet about bocce ball. Bill actually tore his Achilles earlier this year, and bocce helped him get the exercise he needed. We came, and it was the best thing we ever did. Made friends, had fun. Uh, so we've enjoyed it. It was a great way to get involved in the community uh, for us because, as I said, we just were about two years into moving to Torrance. The Bocce Club is up to 70 members now. Wow. Peggy Graham is one of them, and she tells us about some of the other perks to joining this club. They have different little things going. We went to lunch one time, all to a big group of us, and we're going to have a picnic this summer, um, as well as we will be having uh, in August uh, our big tournament here. So uh, it should be a great, great time. And for those who haven't played the game in a while, let's say 30 years, no need to worry. At South Bay Bocce Club, you can get your bocce groove back. Almost 30 years passed with nothing, and I found out about this group and came out here, and they're so friendly and giving and welcoming, and we have such fun. And guess what? It seems to be kind of like riding a bike, because still, I still got it. I can still do it. If you'd like to learn more about the South Bay Bocce Club, stop by Columbia Park on Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., or send an email to bocceforall at gmail.com. That's four, as in the number four. All right, this next story can be best described by saying, easy does it, because it's the actual name of the group exercise class held at the Torrance South Bay YMCA. Easy does it is great for basic strength and conditioning. And as you're about to see, it's a lot of fun. 22, 23, good job, 24, 25, yes, 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 25. You were just listening to Yvonne Carmichael. She's a health and fitness instructor at the Torrance South Bay YMCA. And this right here is a strength and conditioning class for ages 40 and up. It's the perfect class for beginners, hence the name Easy Does It. Yvonne has been an instructor at the Y for almost 22 years now, and she loves it. She teaches aerobics, yoga, and stretching, and she also gives advice on how to live a better and healthier life. According to Yvonne, YMCA members are here to be healthy, and she is here to coach health to them. I love it because I, I feel like I give a chance to give back to our community. And one of the good things I do is I get to teach them about uh, health and how good it feels to be healthy. And I get a chance to teach them about um, nutrition. And I feel that with the training that I had from the YMCA, I feel really validated and I feel really good about 
sharing all the new ideas about healthy nutrition and eating and exercise. And constantly, we're constantly uh, being trained in new different uh, techniques. So it's, we've, we've always got something fresh to give to our members. And so they come and they know that they're going to get the real deal. And here's another group exercise class at the Y that you might want to check out. This one is called core conditioning. It's great for your abdominal muscles, your lower back. It also involves oblique work. It's basically a class that exercises your entire body, if you think about it. And as you can see in this video, it's a good workout, especially for those abs. Now, having a good instructor helps, and that's where Fred Petrie comes in. He started at the Y back in the late 1980s, stopped for a while, and then returned 10 years ago to do this as his retirement gig. I enjoy it. Nice people, and they're all here for the right purpose, trying to improve themselves physically, mentally, spiritually. They're here for the right reasons. I like doing that. I love being here. I've been here for many, many years. I enjoy it. Lovely people, nice facility, and I like the fact that any age bracket, anybody can be here, including myself. If you're interested in learning more about these group exercise classes, just stop by the Torrance South Bay YMCA at their Sepulveda Boulevard location, or give them a call at 310-325-5885. You can also visit them online at ymcala.org, Torrance South Bay. Still to come, there's a big fight coming up involving one of the jiu-jitsu instructors from Gracie University. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Welcome back to the Sports Desk, everyone. Don't forget to watch UFC 226. After all, one of the guys who teaches jiu-jitsu right here in your own backyard is fighting for a world title. This is huge, people. Brian T-City Ortega, who works as an instructor down the road at Gracie University, is undefeated so far in his professional MMA career, and he's about to live out his dream of fighting for a UFC title. Of course, none of this comes as a surprise to Henner Gracie, who trains and works with Ortega over at Gracie U. According to Henner, the world is about to find out what he's known for a long time now. The world is beginning to recognize what I see, which is a kid who never backs down, never gives up. And when he's in worst case scenarios, he flourishes. That's what's crazy. He's in his back, third round, losing two rounds to one. He's loving life, just throwing elbows and going for chokes. He doesn't care. And we hope to see on July 7th what I've always known to be possible, but uh, the world you know, has had their doubts. I think we're going to get bring home the title. And, uh, and, and, and this has been Brian's dream for a long time, so I couldn't be happier, couldn't be more proud of him sticking to it. Good stuff, man. Ortega will take on the featherweight champ Max Holloway in the co-main event of UFC 226. You can catch it on pay-per-view or just head to your favorite Torrance Sports Bar and show some love for T-City. The fight takes place July 7th from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. All right, that does it for this edition of the Sports Desk. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, we appreciate your support. My name is A.J. Vitone, and I've seen, heard, and said enough for one week. We'll continue this conversation again real soon, I promise. Until then, don't forget to follow the Sports Desk on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And remember, you can email us as well. We'd love to hear from you. That's all the time we have, sports fans. We'll catch you next time right here on the Sports Desk.